Hey guys, welcome to Surf and Show. I'm Noel Salas. Today's surfboard review, the JS Flamefish. This is a summer board, a little groveler. It's a stock 5.2 coming in at 27 liters. Now I rode it in the ocean, put it through the paces here in the pool in the advanced setting and the intermediate. We got a special guest, Ian from Wooly TV, my buddy Asa Cascavilla. This is gonna be fun. Sit back, get your favorite drink, enjoy the show. Now the first place I started on this little board was uh, in SoCal, we were at the point breaks. I would say the waves were maybe waist to shoulder high, maybe some head high sets. And I really wanted to just surf the inside, catch a couple waves and see what kind of speed this board was carrying. And um, you know, I expected it to have good speed. I wanna point out that this board is super flat, very low rocker. And I've ridden boards that have um, low entry, low exit, and they're kind of like this shape and they're super fast. However, when you get a board that has a wide tail block and all this area up front, there can be some liabilities where it will catch up here. And if you follow the show, you know that's one of my biggest pet peeves about boards that have this kind of outline. However, when I got on this board, it had that speed. And I really thought, okay, is it gonna do a turn? A section would pop up, I'd hit a turn. I'm like, whoa, that feels good. And when I started, I was riding my uh, pivot twin plus trailer in the carbon. So the board's light, quick. It had that quick responsive feel to it. And it kind of shocked me a little bit. I'm like, usually a board that's this flat, they don't want to do legitimate turns. And then I thought, okay, taking it to Waco, I want to start with surfing it in the intermediate session. Now, if you've surfed the intermediate session here, the wave's a little bit smaller. I would say it's quite a bit weaker. And when you catch the wave, it's further up. Wave one, super weak. This board caught the wave really easy and it had that instant get up and go speed for the takeoff. And then all of a sudden it starts to get a little bit more punchy. Wave gets some curve. And then I'm thinking, okay, as the wave sucks out, is it gonna fit in that curve and not try and pearl the nose? So I would say this board really excelled in the intermediate session and the smaller waves. So then it was time to put it in the advanced setting where the wave gets quite a bit more hollow, the wave's more head high, it's got the punch like, you know, your local beach break. And to my surprise, twin plus trailer felt good. Every now and then I would feel the board kind of like, I'd push off the bottom and there would be a little bit of uh, water flood the deck right here. And I think that was me just kind of leaning too far over on the board and getting a little bit too much lift because the tail's super wide. But then when I put the quad set in, that's when the board kicked into a whole nother gear. It had more flow, it had more speed. I didn't feel that bog even when I was leaning hard into my turns. And I'm kind of wishing that I had done all my testing with this board purely as a quad. And this is why. One of the things that I noticed is when I get on a board that has a really wide tail, having the two fins with that extra drive is gonna have this board help it like, help me hold it on rail longer. I've got tri twice the fin base, so it's got the more drive. And with more fin, I have a little bit more control. Now, thruster, twin plus trailer, actually was super fun. I think as you even get the waves in a real small, kind of mushy situation, you can have fun quad, twin plus trailer, or even thruster. The board's just carrying that kind of speed. Now, on the bottom contours, it's running a single to double and the double starting like right up in this area. And then it's going to like a little bit of V, maybe like the last six inches of the board. And with this board being so flat and it having that double, it really helped the board roll over from rail to rail and have that flow. Now, one of the things I noticed about the rails, it's a little bit fuller, but it's not a flat deck. There's a lot of foam forward. You can push this board for you heavily front footed guys. You can drive it from the front of the board and you won't have a lot of problems with it catching up here if you don't get it too big. But when I talk about the rail being fuller, water adheres to curve. And with that fuller rail, once I put the board on rail and I set it, I can push as hard as I want. And I felt like even though it was shorter, I had the squirt and the drive off the bottom turns and even in some good cutbacks. When the wave even got like pretty hollow, I was like, man, how is this board actually leaning over and giving me the ability to push through it? I would say the board's holding excellent speed. 
It's got the drive for how short it is. It's doing a high performance turn when you want it. Great to be back on Surf and Show with Noel. It's Ian here from Woolly TV. And now I'm on the JS Flamefish in the Hi-Fi construction, riding it with FCS plugs at the moment. So let's get in the water and see how it goes. A lot of fun on this guy. As you can see from the grovelly little waves in there, I managed to get the thing moving really fast and so maneuverable, so much fun. I've never ridden a little groveler like this that allowed me to surf it like a performance board. I've got the quad fins in it here now, but I actually rode it more as a just a standard thruster, the tri-set, and I just had the JSs in a medium and they were perfect for me. I really enjoyed it. The volume was spot on. I didn't need to go any bigger than 5.8 at 36 and a half was perfect. It paddles really well. It's dead flat so you can catch anything, but it still turns. So I don't know how they've done it, but well done JS. Really like this one. Thanks. You. It's a, a nether board through the paces at Waco. Let's start with what you were thinking right, right away when I gave it to you and it was in your arms. What were you thinking? <laughs> I was thinking, why do I have to ride this board? <laughs> Why it, do you say that though? Just because it looks like an egg. <laughs> right. It's, kinda... it's, it's got the blunt nose, mm -hmm. super flat rocker. Yep. When I was at um, an Oceanside picking up this board and talking to the boys at JS, and they were like, this board is so fun. And if you put it in a real wave, it'll actually do a real turn. And I was like, just like you, I was like, there's no way this board could go good. Mm -hmm. So bringing it to the pool, 5'2, 27 liters. You're what? How tall are you again? 5'10. 165. 165. All right and flotation was there. Talk about the speed and how the board felt. Yeah, flotation was there. I mean, it caught the waves so easy. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's a little windy today, so you had some offshores kind of blowing you up, but this thing just got right into the wave for how short it was. It was fun. And uh, first wave, I could just kind of feel it. It was flowing. You know what I mean? It had a good kind of rail-to-rail -rail feel, and it was real quick. Yeah. Real fun. So yeah. How does it feel as a quad? Do you feel like you have traction? Does it have the drive and the speed that you were expecting it to have? Uh, a ton. A ton of traction, a ton of drive, a ton of speed. Um, super fun. Rail to rail. It just wanted to constantly carry speed into each turn. Yeah. Real flowy. Yeah. And I think that's one of the things that I get most concerned about. The first time I picked the board up, I was like, I don't know if this board can go. It doesn't have much rocker. This wave gets real steep and what's it gonna do mm -hmm. when you're in that section and you're turning down and there's no curve in the board to match the curve of the wave. Mm -hmm. But because it's so short, it fits. Mm -hmm. And then the quad is just silky smooth. Mm -hmm. And with the wider tail, you can get that little bit of playful like slide if you want. Yeah. So I felt like it looked really good on you when I watched you get some turns and I was going over waves. I saw the fins come out the back a few times. 
I thought it looked pretty darn good on you for a 5.2 out there. Yeah, I agree. I think it was it was pretty fun. It would love to spin. Like, if you want to learn how to spin, this thing wants to spin. Too. Like 360s, tail yeah. slides. Mm -hmm. uh, I think it's a probably a, not only a fun pool board, but I think most surfers will have a great time on this groveling for the summer. I agree. It didn't have really like a sweet spot. I felt like if my feet weren't exactly right, I could still get it to move. Right. Well, guys, I hope you enjoyed today's review on the JS Flamefish. This is a legitimate groveler. It's a great summer board. I recommend it from that lower level beginner intermediate all the way to pro level surfers would have a great time for those less than average days. Head high and below, mushy, this thing's gonna go so fun for you. The other thing I wanna mention is that when you put it in a wave and it's actually got a little section to hit, this board does legitimate turns, which I think will make for, you know, a fun day when the waves are a little bit better than you thought they were gonna be. This board's gonna surprise you. Now, a special shout out thanks to JS for sending the board in for review, Ian from Wooly TV putting the board through the paces and West Oz, Asa Cascavilla here at Waco. Look guys, if you like the show, subscribe, ring the bell so you don't miss an episode and give us a thumbs up if you like our content. Until next time, we'll see you in the water. Bye-bye.